You guys, I am so excited because you know what day it is. Hey everyone, this is Yami. Welcome back to my channel. I am your Latina Next Door and I am excited because I have a very special video for you guys today. So as you know, two weeks ago I announced my new monthly challenge for you guys called the Look for Less. Today is the day that we share the first round of projects. Now real quick, if you are new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can get notified every time I upload a new video. And also, this way you don't miss next month's Look For Less challenge and maybe even join in on the fun as well. Now make sure that you visit my co-host, Heidi Sambal. She has an amazing Look For Less project for you guys. It involves reupholstering a thrift store chair to look like something from Pottery Barn. So once you're finished here, make sure you go over there. I'll link to her channel below. Thank you so much, Heidi, for joining me this month and kicking off this Look For Less monthly challenge. Now, if you're like me, you like going to high-end stores or looking through high-end magazines to get inspiration for your home. Now, for my project. In this Look For Less challenge, I decided to tackle a gorgeous mirror, but not just any mirror, because I know you have seen those beautiful window mirrors, the ones that have the really pretty lattices on the front, the arches, you know what I'm talking about? You've seen them in places like Pottery Barn, Ballard Designs, even uh, Pure One. They have them, but they can be very expensive. But honestly, for the price you see here, I was not gonna fork that amount of money for a mirror. We could argue that it was my husband who wouldn't let me. I'm just saying. So I decided that I wanted to recreate one of these beautiful window pane mirrors. So naturally, I went to my local Goodwill store to see if I can find a mirror. And I don't usually find any in my location, but this time, I actually got lucky. Now, with the help of some dowels, here is what I came up with, and here is how I did it. Now this is the mirror that I found at my local Goodwill. It was $5.96. So I just basically used my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. I already had this from previous project. And I gave it two full coats. Then I purchased four dowels. These are three eighths of an inch. And I got these from Home Depot. They were only 98 cents a piece. And I also painted them in the same white. Then once everything was dry, I started placing them on top of the mirror, trying to figure out exactly where I wanted to put my grid and what size I wanted to make my squares. And then once I had that figured out, I started making my marks on my dowels and measuring to make sure I had the right measurements before I cut it. Then I used this little miter saw kit that we had on hand in order to cut them. I'll link to a smaller one below that's much better for crafts. And then I just started sanding down the edges to make sure I got a nice fit inside the frame mirror. When it came to add my uh, perpendicular lines onto the frame, I made sure that my corners were even and I also marked the frame where each of the dowels were going to go because I was not gluing them as I went. I was actually just laying them down trying to get my grid and my pattern down first. I made sure that the squares were both four inches wide and in height. Once I knew, I marked where I was going to make my cut, and then I also marked the dowel underneath it on both sides so I knew where to place it once I made that cut. And I went ahead and kind of created the grid on all four corners. That way, I can see how it was going to turn out after they were all put together. And then I just kept cutting and adding more to the frame. Now, these are not glued as of yet. Now, since this was a smaller mirror, I could only do two diamonds in the center. So what I did was I measured out each center of the inside squares. This is where the diamond corners were going to touch the frame. And I made those marks on the dowels as you see here. 
Then I took my dowel at an angle and marked where I needed to make those cuts and inserted those diamonds. Here's mirror with the two diamonds in the center. Now once I was happy with the placement of the dowels, then I started adding little dots of wood glue to the tops of them. Not to adhere it to the mirror, but to adhere it to each other because I was going to pop it off. And I was going to clean the mirror underneath. I ended up adding a few more dowels because I thought it was kind of empty. Then I added more glue on both sides to reinforce the frame and I sanded the corners down. I gave the mirror a good cleaning and then I erased any pencil marks, painted over them and I did the same thing with the actual frame insert. And I used E6000 in order to glue the frame insert into the mirror that way in case there was anything that seeped out, I wouldn't really see it. And then there were a few areas that needed to be cleaned up so I just took some rubbing alcohol with a Q-tip and I just erased those areas away. Now to give it a little bit of that rustic look, I took some acrylic gray paint, put it on a paper towel, and just rubbed it lightly on all the corners of the mirror to give it this look. And here is the finished product. The thing I like most about this project is that it's so customizable. You can make this a round mirror, a square mirror, a full length mirror. You can make it any color you want to suit your color scheme. I think I did pretty good. The original on sale cost $199 versus mine, which cost me $10 for the mirror and those towels. Everything else I already had on hand. But if you needed to buy them, like the paint and maybe even the glue, it might cost you up to $20 or so. But even still, that's still an amazing bargain. And you guys, if you love those mirrors with the really pretty arches with the round details on them, here's a quick hack. Use an embroidery hoop and I'll show you how. Now for this to work, you're gonna have to use both hoops. You're gonna remove that little end piece and you're going to glue that outer piece to the inner piece. And don't worry about that little open piece on the outside hoop because all you have to do is stick a dowel in it and you will cover that little gap up. Super easy. Now you can use a small dowel like this one. As you can see, it is shorter than the hoop or you can use a larger one that's the same width. All right, so if you like this video, please make sure to give this a thumbs up. I would love to see what y'all think about this recreation. Thank you all for those who joined this challenge this month. I cannot wait to check out your videos. And make sure you stick around by hitting the subscribe button and hitting that little notification bell so you guys can join in on the fun next month during my new Look For Less challenge. I have another co-host who does amazing DIYs coming your way and I can't wait to share her with you. And if you're interested in seeing my other videos, I'll go ahead and leave a link right here that way you guys can watch some of my other DIYs tutorials and even hauls and get to know my channel a little bit better I will see you guys in the next one until then adios